Hello there, uh, today we're going to be looking at how to create this kind of simulation where you have a character running through a wooden fence and uh, breaking it. Yeah, so um, I'm doing this kind of rigid body simulation tutorials because I haven't seen uh, such tutorials being done, a lot of them uh, being done, and I, I think uh, a lot of you might want to do something like this. So yeah, let's look at this simulation and how you can easily set it up. So. Okay, so, and uh, with this kind of simulation, you also have some creative uh, directing or creative control over the simulation. So if you want to change things a bit, you can easily uh, change them. Uh, for example, if I want, you can see this piece here falls down, but if I didn't want that to happen, I can easily have it fixed uh, so that all the other pieces fall, but uh, this doesn't. Uh, you can see each of these pieces is connected using a rigid body constraint, which is basically this empty, and uh, it just tells Blender what piece is connected to, with, uh, to which piece. So, for example, you see these dotted lines, uh, those are just relationship lines are connected, connecting one piece at another, to another piece. For example, this piece, if you trace its uh, relationship line, you can see it's uh, connected to different pieces using this constraint and uh, this rigid body constraint. So if I want it to be fixed to this object here as well, I think I already have that fixed to, to this object here. Yes. You can see that relationship line. It's just an empty with a rigid body constraint and uh, you just select this object and this pole and fix them together. Right now the threshold is uh, really low, that's why this piece breaks up, breaks off, but uh, if I increase the threshold, say something like 1000, then it stays intact. So it's kind of procedural somehow, because right? you can change things uh, the way you want. And uh, so for example, this piece is stuck here, but uh, if I wanted to, if I wanted that piece to break off, I'll just find its uh, constraint, rigid body constraint that fixes it to this pole. And uh, for this case, I think it's this object here, this empty here. And I will reduce that, the threshold, so that it falls down. Uh, if say I wanted to fix, uh, let me see which piece, here. this piece here, on here, I will just add an empty, just scale it down a bit like that and I give it a rigid body constraint select the piece I want uh, so which is which piece okay I think we can go with any of these pieces I'm just going to constrain that piece because add to this fix it to this so it doesn't break off and see it stays there. Let's increase the threshold. It still moves simply because uh, its mass is really less and uh, it's getting collide it's being collided into directly uh, by this character. So if I try increasing the, the mass of this object makes it, it should make it harder uh, to move but because this object uh, the character is running into it directly it's very hard for it to stay together to stay that uh, the force with which this character is hitting this is above uh, the threshold the threshold so i would have to increase this really really high and uh, i don't think that would even stop that from moving because uh, this character is uh is unmated so they don't really have they have an infinite force they can exert to any object in your scene. So it doesn't matter how how large are the, th the threshold I set for this object. Uh, because it's, go it's getting hit directly, uh, it, uh, it will still break off. Uh, but uh, we can find a piece that doesn't, yeah, like this, that doesn't collide with the character. Because the character, as I said, has an infinite force because it's being unmated. Uh, it has the unmated uh, property checked on. If it didn't have, then it would be able, this 
this piece would be able to stay there but so let's try this on this piece here uh, just add an empty give it a rigid body constraint select this and select that so it should be able to stay there and because it's not in the way of the character it's not being collided with directly with the character uh, you don't need an infinite force uh, to break it apart so if I put it at 100 you can see it stays there and if I make this threshold like one then it would break off so that's how I got some of the pieces to stay around and that some of the pieces would be uh, collided with and uh, yes yeah, so this character here just has a passive a rigid body constraint and animated so that I can animate them uh, moving forward and then now to fracture these pieces let me just open up a new blender project here just to show you how that how you can do that I'm using the fracture add-on which you can activate by going into the preferences and then search for uh, the cell fracture cell fracture add-on uh, you can access it under object quick effects cell fracture so if you use uh, make sure to apply the scale before you do the cell fracture to get better fractures uh, so if you want to use if you use the default cell the default cell fractures as uh, settings what you're going to get is uh, these pieces broken up evenly uh, but that's not what we want let me also first turn off turn on random color activity here if you don't want that uh, even distribution of uh, fractures you can uh, just add in some bit of noise you can see now we get that fractures but they don't really look anything like wooden chips are like we have here yeah. i want this character are uh, these pieces to fall not fall before uh, the character uh, hits them so you need to turn on the activate and start activated like that sometimes if it doesn't work you need to activate the activate it and activate it again uh, for the simulation to refresh and uh, recalculate everything so to apply this setting to all the to all the fractures you have to select all the fractures i usually have all my fractures in the same collection and you can also always find them under uh, the rigid body co collection so then you activate you turn on the activation right click copy selected to copy that setting to all the fractures you have otherwise only one piece will have the activation turn on and uh, you want all the pieces to have and that's how you make sure that uh, the pieces don't fall before uh, they collide they are collided into then yeah we are working on making the fractures look more wooden so you can uh, to make this more wooden meaning that uh, they'll be stretched uh, horizontally rather than having a, rather than being uh, like this let me just increase my just first subdivide this a few times and because you can see if we just divide this we, we're only getting a few fractures so if I subdivide this a few times without doing anything but that I get more fractures I get more fractures you can see so to make wooden chips uh, you you want to find the wider axis you, you are using so for example uh, the wider axis on this object is uh, the x-axis so I can go to cell fracture and uh, scale this reduce the scale on the x-axis to something like 0 0.01 so that the pieces are stretched on the x-axis I like that now you can see they look more like wooden chips now if I want to do that even further I can just instead of using on particles I can change to on vertices and, uh, maybe reduce the noise a bit and hit ok you can see we have something like that maybe let me just increase uh, the source limit now that should give me more pieces and let me even subdivide this further to get more pieces and pieces noise noise ta, ta, ta. everything is good now you can see we get now more wooden uh, fractures like that and then you just re remove the original uh, version and uh, you are set just have to add a, a flow and 
rigid body passive are for the floor and then object rigid body active and you have your wooden pieces some of them will fall through the the floor but if you don't want to if you don't want that just give this some volume shift in apply scale and uh, that will make sure that uh, none of them goes through i can see this is trying to go through so if you have a simple surface like this you can change the collision shape to box and uh, make sure you reset the origin to geometry and uh, that should fix a few of the issues we have okay this is still a gadget simulation we need to reset the simulation so that everything is afresh just move this up a bit okay this piece is for some reason just going through our mesh regardless Well, sometimes it's, uh, you don't always get the simulations. Just recalculate no more than C. Okay, so that piece, I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe we need to increase uh, under rigid body uh, the solver iterations but uh you can also reduce the speed if you want and just actually that is too low but to make the five to make the pieces look more heavy uh, so basically that's most of the settings i use and uh, to make sure that this uh, doesn't collide before it's uh, uh the character interacts with it or collides into it you just have to give it Turn on deactivated. Make sure to right click to copy to selected and uh, start activated, and also give it. Uh, now this will only start moving if an object collides into it. For example, if I have this animated into the wall, give it a rigid body constraint. Sorry, rigid body type animated you can see now everything collides after uh, this is then you can add in the constraints so if i want to have these pieces connected together i'll just select all of them go to object rigid body connect and connect all the pieces together uh, with a uh, rigid body constraints so uh, what you want to do is uh, make sure that uh, when you connect you change uh, the connection type pattern from selected to active to chain by distance so that uh, the pieces nearest to each other are connected first before they are connected to anything else so now makes the entire a piece behave like a one piece uh, you can also select that entire batch and uh, go to object rigid body uh, calculate mass to calculate uh, the mass of the entire object uh, I can choose because this is timber we just select timber and uh, you can set density if you want and this will make it behave more like a timber so now I can also maybe just have these bottom pieces selected and give them a higher mass or say or actually just gi give them a type of pass passive so that they don't move uh, copy to selected now if this collides with this we get that but uh, they're not breaking apart because these constraints are said to unbreakable so to make them breakable you need to Turn that on make sure you copy to select it so that the, the settings are transferred to other copies and you can see now they fall down now if we increase the, th the threshold here to something like 500 some pieces will stay intact like you see there and uh, that's how i animated uh, this i also added in some particle simulations 
are some of those small pieces that just particle simulations. If you want to watch the entire process, you can uh, go to my second channel, uh, Blender Money, and I should be able to watch that there. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching.